So, Cam, encapsulizing what you just did in regards to your Miami fandom going back to the glory days, but looking more uh, recently at some marginal times and some marginalized times because of poor coaching and uh, other circumstances uh, surrounding the program, uh, big fans, rabid fans can typically, you can say a score, and it brings to mind a game and a game that's beyond the game, a game that represents something. So I'm going to throw two scores at you and you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about because we mentioned one before we started to record, but I'll throw another one at you. 48, nothing Virginia. Obviously you know what that means. And 58, nothing to this Clemson team just two years ago. And for a program that was not achieving at the expectations of Miami football at championship caliber, the team was still good throughout the, you know, the 2005 to 13 or 14 or 15 range. But that 58 nothing against Clemson kind of marked, okay, wow, uh, something needs to be done right away. Al Golden is not the guy. We didn't think it before this. Now we know it, and something needs to happen in a hurry. And for this program to have rebounded this quickly – some less than two years after what we saw there in Miami against the Clemson Tigers is pretty astounding. Yeah, you know, it is. And both of those games um, are very fresh in the forefront of my brain because I was at both of those games for the duration. The 48 nothing to Virginia was the last game, the Orange Bowl. And I sat in the upper deck of the West End Zone with my buddy and I kept screaming at him that we needed to leave and everything. And he just looked at me and said, I drove, you're not leaving. Uh, Cause I live in Broward, you know, like up in Fort Lauderdale area, not down in the downtown Miami area, which is where the orange bowl once was. So yeah, I was kind of stuck a ways away from home. Uh, and this is like before Uber and whatnot. So there was really no good option. So I sat there and watched every single play of that terrible, terrible game. And then 58, nothing to Clemson. I was in the press box for that one. And, Literally, in the second half, I sat in the press box and counted people in the sections along the sideline because, like, I mean, I looked up every three plays and Clemson scored again. Um, but literally, there were so few people that I counted, like, 11 people in that section, and seven people in that section because everybody was fed up, um, and rightfully so. And it was just 100%. It was the worst loss in the history of Miami Hurricanes football. Like, statistically, you can look it up. And it was the thing that pushed Al Golden out of the door. It, cre it, it That was a straw that broke the camel's back. And I wrote that whole entire 2015 season. And that was the game when Miami basically almost snatched defeat from the hands of victory against Nebraska and barely came back to win that game that they should have won by 40 or 50 uh, in overtime. And I wrote that whole year and people were very, very upset with me about it. And I even came on here and said, look, the athletic director, Blake James, said he's not going to fire Al Golden. He says he's going to evaluate the coaching staff at the end of the year. And I didn't believe that anything was going to push him away from that stance. And then I saw 58 nothing, and oh my goodness, like that was untenable. There could be, there was no coming back from that. I would have fired Al Golden that night. Um, and that was a very quick and curt um media availability, uh, post-game press conference type thing. I think Al Golden answered like two or three questions and then uh, walked off really quickly and everybody in the room uh, just kind of was there flabbergasted, like, bro, like, wait, wait, no, we got more questions. Like, you can't just leave after that game and not answer about that. But, you know, I say all that to say that, you know, that was rock bottom for Miami, honestly and truly. And, you know, getting Al Golden out, even though it, you might not have wanted it to be in such a way as he was embarrassed like that, but it was an absolute necessity. And Miami rebounded really quickly and got Mark Richt in here um, and has really turned this program around. Eight and four, nine and four last year, including that big bowl win against a overmatched West Virginia team who talked all that crap and got smacked in the mouth. And then, you know, you run through 10 and 0 into the se regular season finale this year, uh, hadn't lost, like I said, in 13 months. You lose to Pittsburgh, but you're still in prime position to make the college football playoff a really a year, a full year in advance, because most people were looking at the 2018 season as when Miami would have the depth and talent to really get back to where they want to be competing for championships, both um, conference and national. But 
they're uh, they're at the the doorstep of crossing that vanguard now. So, yeah, I mean, I know what both of those numbers were that you said forty eight nothing and fifty eight nothing. But honestly, forty eight nothing that was Randy Shannon and when you know or Larry Coker or somebody a long time ago. But fifty eight nothing was only two years ago, and that was something that really when it hit rock bottom. Everybody had to evaluate what was going on. Players, the coaches, the administration, and say, if we want things to change, then we really need to make a big change. And they did that. Obviously, they've stepped up with getting the coaching staff, one of the best coaching staffs in America. They stepped up their financial obligation or interaction with those coaches where they're paying them what they would be getting paid at bigger state schools with maybe even a little bit more of a budget. But again, if you want good people, you're going to have to compensate them. That's just the way that it works in a professional world. And Miami's doing that. So uh, they're in a great place. Uh, you know, we're continuing to raise the bar, get more talent on this team, still rebuild depth. But yeah, you know, uh, I was there through the dark days, but I'm here for the sunshine and, and the, you know, the happiness now. So hopefully we have more of that on Saturday.